In this video, I'll be talking about how to create sprites and apply alpha masking for transparency in your Python games. Start with the general idea and a sketch. It's good to plan out everything that will need a sprite as well as if it's animated or not. If it's animated, get an idea of how many frames of animation that sprite should be. So for example, a side-scrolling ship sh shooter game would need, at minimum, a sprite for the player's ship, the player's laser, an enemy, and an enemy laser. With these, you can make a working game from only four sprites. I'll talk a little bit later about putting this to use. If you're just starting out, you're wondering what graphics program you should use. While there are free options out there, you really need to aim at using a program made just for this purpose. Now, while I tend to recommend the free option, I'm serious, hear me out on this one. Buy a sprite. It's on Steam for $20, and you can get it cheaper when it goes on sale. This will be the only tool you will ever need for making pixel art. I'm serious. There's an adage, a carpenter is only as good as their hammer. Well, it makes sense to have the best tool for the job. Now there's a lot of tutorials on using a sprite, I'll just call it a sprite. So I'll leave that to others. The goal of this video is about actually making sprite for use in your games. Start small and easy, work up from there. I suggest studying old school sprites. It's okay to copy and use them for your projects, but you better not distribute or sell them, obviously. Now what you want to do is make a new file and set the width and the height to 8 pixels. The color mode should be RGBA and the background set it as white for now. And click OK. Now you'll start off with a very tiny screen. You want to zoom in all the way. So the first thing you'll want to do once you have this open is you want to select a pre-selected color palette and you want to choose one that's 16 colors and the first one you can pick any 16 color one let's just go with this arc 16 click load and go away so limit yourself to a small palette of colors for this exercise you want to use this to familiarize yourself with drawing on the canvas and how the program works so click on view, grid, grid settings, change the width and the height to 1, and this will show you every single pixel as a grid. With this setup, let's draw an apple. You're probably wondering, how can we draw an apple in such a limited space with only these colors? Apples are red. Well, not all apples, but this apple's red. So we're just going to draw a small little blob. This is a weird looking apple, and that's okay. It's okay to be a weird looking apple. It's going to be a little heart shape. With a brown stem. Oops. Control Z to undo. See? Even I... Oops. Even I make mistakes. Let's do a little leaf. It's so tiny. And even better, we can do a highlight on the apple. Is that an apple? You decide. But you know what? We drew an apple. An effect you can do is you can do a black outline. And I will just kind of go over everything I just drew, which is okay. We make our apple a little bit smaller. Make it look a little bit different. And uh, with a black outline, it'll make it, the colors pop. With that done, let's have a look at the tutorial ship game sprites and take a step into alpha masking. To access the game files, you'll need to go to GitHub. And what you'll need to do is change the branch from master to alpha mask for this exercise. Once you switch the branch, click code and then download zip. Save it to wherever location you want and unzip them and we will dig into the files. Using tutorial ship game as an example, I decided on a sprite sheet with 12 sprites total. 
we have three for the ship, three for the enemy. We have the enemy getting blown up, and then we have the player's laser and the enemy's laser. So the reason why you want to use alpha masking over color key masking is that with color key masking, you're only masking just the single color. In this case, it's just black. So all the color black doesn't show up in our game. With alpha masking, we can use the alpha channel and that determines how transparent our stuff goes. So looking at the game right now, it is using just color key as a mask. It is making the color black invisible. So we're going to change all of it to use alpha masking. So what you typically do is uh, when you do a new sprite, you want to make sure the background is set to transparent. And this will give you a new image with an alpha channel. Makes it easy. As you can see, background color, it has an alpha channel, and it is cranked up all the way. So it's invisible. Okay. And if you're working with an image that doesn't have an alpha as the background, what you do is you click on where it says black background, and you change layer from background. That gives you the ability to use alpha. And what we'll do is... We'll replace all of the black with alpha. And we'll save it. The icon we don't need to worry about. The ground, we'll do the same. we we'll change the layer from background. And we'll paint away the black. The ceiling will do the same. We'll change layer from background. And we'll paint away the black and save. Now for our actual background, we don't want to alpha this, but we'll go ahead and say layer from background. So it gives it the alpha channel and then we'll save it. And that's all we have to do to set these up. And now we can start doing special effects. What we'll do is, uh, right now we have solid colors here and we will change it to use some alpha magic. So I'm going to select this whole sprite and under edit we're going to do adjustments and we'll change the hue saturation so in the hue saturation window what we'll do is we'll deselect the red green and blue channels so we're only affecting the alpha i mean you can leave it enabled because we're just messing here but this is just for a demo and as you can see when we change the alpha we lower it it fades away. Now we we just want to do a subtle effect, so we'll just change it to 20 and okay. We'll do the same for the enemy laser. Remember edit, adjustments, hue, and we'll subtract it by 20. Easy stuff. Then what we'll do is we will select our color. We're going to do a red at about, we'll just guess about 50. And we'll do the outside uh, as just pure alpha. Now what we can do when we select gradient, we can change it to a radial, radial gradient. And as we drag the mouse around, you can see it's doing a gradient. So what we'll want to do is start kind of like from the outside and drag it in. We can do the same for the player laser. Instead of red, we'll change it to a blue channel. Okay. So it's smeared around the laser. That's fine. That's what we want. That's all we got to do for this smear. So once we have the alpha done in our sprites, all we got to do is change the code. And this is super easy. Looking at our tutorial file, look at the uh, sprite sheet, and previously we have a convert when we load the file name. We don't need that. We really don't. And what we need to do is change this convert when we load the actual sprite, 
the image into the surface, we need to add a convert alpha here. Alpha. And what you need to do is add a flag as well, which is pygame dot src alpha. And for our custom function, we'll need to make sure and change that as well. And you know what? That's it. That's all you got to do to get alpha working. So we'll run our game. And look, it looks just like how it was before, except if you notice around the bullets, it's a very... Let me pause the game there. You can see the alpha blended around the bullets. And when the enemies fire, yeah, they're kind of lit up as well. So with alpha, we can, what we can do is we can create a dark mask. That is, we will blacken out the edges of the screen so that the level appears darker. And what we'll need to do in order to get that to work is we'll load up our background. And we'll, when we make a new image, make sure it's on transparent. 320 by 240 is... We need to get double the size by 480. Transparent. Awesome. So what we need to do is make a circle around the player. And we can use any color for this. Let's make it a bright pink. Awesome. And we'll just draw a big circle. So this will be our visibility around the player. Of course, we need to get it a bit more centered. So, how do you freaking center it? I'll tell you how. Let's do it with the 320 by uh, 240. Look at that. We now have a tool to help us center by using the grid tool. Alright, just like that. It's centered. Now what we're going to do is make a new layer. So our background layer, we can call it as visible. This other layer, it's going to be called the dark. The darkness. Let's call it the darkness. And we are going to make it the darkest dark of black. And what we're going to do is we're going to fade to... Well, nothing. Nothing really. So using our circle again, what'll happen is... Uh-oh, that's the wrong way, right? You need to switch it. Push X to switch the foreground color to the mask and the background color to, well, the not mask. So now when we draw, as you can see, that's it. And what we can do is, with the, uh, the visible, we can select the inside of it. And then, on the darkness, when you paste it, we're going to paint it nothing, right? Exactly. So here's our visible range, and that's kind of sharp, isn't it? So what we can do is a simple blur around the edge. Let's make this kind of big. So we blur the edge. That's not as sharp looking. Just like that. So now we have a nice smooth edge. And the more we blur it, the uh, greater the effect. So if this isn't... Right now it looks kind of like a spotlight. Which is okay. If you crank it up all the way, you can blur it again. You can go around as many times as you like. Every time you go around, it blurs it a little bit more. It buzzes it. It's very subtle, but that's fine. Alright, now all we gotta do is save this. We're gonna call this darkness.png. We wanna make sure it's a PNG, because that saves our alpha channel. Okay. Now that we have our darkness, all we got to do is we got to bring it in the game. So we're going to treat it kind of like our background, our background image, but we're going to call it our darkness image. 
What did we call it again? We called it darkness. That's right. Make sure we put in that convert alpha in there. All right, our background image again. We're gonna search for it. And what we'll do is, we're going to draw our darkness image. And what this does is it puts it at, the top left corner is zero, zero. Well, we know it's at negative, what, 320, negative 240. That was our center. And as you'll see, it puts it up in the top left. You can see the effect. That's okay, but what we want to do is we want to put it towards our player x. Player dot rex dot x plus player dot rex dot y. Now, if I did this right, when we run it, we now have it following the player. As you can see, it's a pretty big circle. That's okay. We drew a pretty big circle. That's why we can uh, change this even further if we wanted to. So let's do just that. So let's say we didn't like this at all. Let's just delete it. Try again. Our visible circle. We need to make it smaller. So let's make it... Let's make it an ellipse. How about that? Get it roughly centered. We're just eyeballing it. Let's go back to our darkness. Make sure that's masked to be completely clear. And we will paint another another circle. So this was kind of big, right? Let's have a let's have it even darker. Like we can barely see around can barely see around it so what we'll do we'll save it as is and I'll show you what this does so you so with the visible circle you can actually see where it is and what we're doing we have it displaying behind the background because I mean hey we're just putting it on the background right So we're gonna do we're gonna put it in the foreground. Draw the darkness. We're gonna go all the way. Now we'll we don't want it to affect the UI element, so we'll put it before the UI elements. Now when we run this, ooh, look how dark and scary everything is. And as you see, as we get closer to the train. It kind of fades in and out, according to our visible circle. This is dark, isn't it? So even when we shoot lasers, they start fading out pretty severely after the circle. That's pretty cool, but we want it a little bit more clear than that. So we'll select, oops, we shall select our visible circle. And then paste our mask and clear it. Then we will do our blur effects. I'm just going to do one loop around. File save. And there we go. There we go indeed. So this is a pretty dark level. Ooh, I shot an enemy and I didn't even see where it was. So this makes it look like the lasers are not illuminating. And that's kinda meh. All we can do is we can just move the lasers out of the darkness. 
So now when we shoot, it's not affected by the darkness alpha mask. Because the lasers emit light, right? Of course they do. And we see the enemy lasers. But we don't see the enemies until they're in there. And that's it. That is all you have to do to uh, make this alpha magic work. So I'll save the file as is, like this, and it will be in the alpha mask branch for you to play with. Enjoy!